I suppose a real adventure is in not knowing where you are going. Well, I know where I want to go with CNC routing, but I can see I'm going to be lost for most of the journey. My name is Jeremy Brune, and in case you haven't heard of me, I wrote what was referred to in 1989 as the Routing Bible. And I think it's fair to say I know my way around a router. But my routing experience doesn't really give me a head start because even the cutters used for CNC are different to those used in a router. But let me say part of where I want to go with CNC routing is to explore what cutters can do because it seems to me that the time-consuming creation of tool paths for say edge treatments could be simplified by using a specialist cutter uh, in one pass and I've got a lot of those specialist cutters uh, that I've had for years and I'm itching to use. Well the first thing I learned is that most DIY CNC routers have tiny cutters so I immediately thought I need a spindle that takes a half inch shank cutter. But that requires a big sturdy machine and a lot of cash as bigger spindles can cost up to £400 with all the necessary electronics. So I took the unusual and you might think crazy step to embark on my adventure into CNC woodworking via two modes of transport. I decided to build a very robust CNC kit of a size adequate for what I'm likely to want to do and that might include forming entire guitar shapes. And alongside this kit, I got my hands on a small, completed CNC machine that would be up and running in an hour or so. The idea being that I could become familiar with how it all works and make the right decision for how big a spindle I could get away with on my bigger machine and whether, for instance, it should be air or water cooled because a quiet running spindle is a priority for me. Now before I go further, I should explain why a master of hand craftsmanship, such as myself, who was trained as a cabinet maker and exhibited amongst the leaders in my field over several decades in the UK, would land up going for a robotic machine for his woodworking. Well, for a start, the term hand craftsmanship is a little naughty because we all know that most furniture makers or woodworkers use machines out of necessity. Indeed, if you want to be a purist, a bench plane is a chisel in a jig and is arguably cheating compared to controlling by hand a bare chisel to achieve a flat surface. Well, that's a bit silly. For me, the important issue is to learn hand skill first and thus learn about the character and behaviour of wood and always be in control of the process so that the machine serves you rather than dictates to you. Woodworking is multifaceted and there'll always be the need for hand processes when making something. And the other thing is life is too short, well for me anyway. A CNC machine will, I hope, release my valuable time for replicating laborious parts while I get on with the other creative tasks. Now did I say freeing up my time? Well that's where I was wrong because halfway through building this lovely CNC machine and alongside it firing up the small completed machine I came up against a huge brick wall and most of you will guess what that is. I had rather simplistically thought I could shortcut the daunting task of learning massively detailed CNC software by importing images, uh, clicking on a command, sending a G-code to the CNC machine, pressing start and going off fishing for the day. Well, no. I spent about three days getting my head around what was needed to machine a simple artefact such as my logo in a piece of plywood which incidentally was cut in under 20 seconds uh, by a CNC workshop. So there are three stages or elements from idea to cut object. A computer-aided design or CAD program is needed to create the object. 
a CAM program, which I think stands for Computer Aided Machining. That's needed to interpret that object into G code, which is a string of numbers. And thirdly, a controlling software that imports the G code into the machine and enables you to cut the object, storing a whole load of settings for future use, such as spindle speed and feed rate for particular features in a particular wood. I envisage doing a lot of uh, CNC machining in plywood. Now, I must say I'm confused. There's considerable overlap in what the three stages can do. And it seemed obvious to me to try to find a very basic three-in-one package to get started. You know, I'd be quite happy to just control the machine manually with forward, side and upward commands to get to know it. And a perfect example, or certainly an example I want to start off with, is to skim uh, these uh, log slices. Certainly a lot quicker than using my radial arm saw and drum sander. So all in all, there's a lot to get my head around and face up to the reality that CNC woodworking both saves time but also absorbs a lot of time. I did consider a digitising probe to avoid this huge learning curve, but then it can take almost 24 hours to scan a tiny object, so I realised I was going to have to learn the hard way how to use the software from scratch, like everybody else. Well, I eventually managed to find a good trial software that combines CAD with CAM. And in my next video, I'll look at this and give an update on the building of this really great CNC machine. And I nearly forgot to say that the appeal of building this machine is the open source community where ideas and knowledge are so freely shared. I mean, that's really refreshing. I also found an enthusiastic accomplice to help me build the machine kit, as he also wants to get into CNC woodworking. Uh, he will share his thoughts in the next video, no doubt. Now, one closing thought. When the furniture industry first took up CNC, it always puzzled me why the methods of the past were replicated in this new technology, such as frame and panel construction in MDF or even copying intricate carving from previous centuries. Why not shape the future rather than copy the past and see what the machine easily wants to do? And this is going to be a big part of my venture, so please do join me and subscribe to be notified um, of when my next video in the series will be available. Well, thanks for watching.